Today we're going to be smoking some brand new dice, but not in the grilling kind of way, and also not in the 420 way. No, instead this is going to be an epic smoke down of cataclysmic proportions. So if this video lights a fire in you, don't worry. We're going to prevent forest fires, because these dice are smoky. First things first, in order to make dice, you're gonna need some sort of mold to put your resin in. Now, I've showed how to make those in a previous video, so I'm gonna link that up both in the top of your screen and the description of this video, so you don't have to relearn how to do it. So if you need to learn how, you can go check out that video. However, I will say, those type of molds are actually gonna be pretty detrimental to us in the process here. They are fantastic molds, however, because they have sprues, it is really hard to get a good swirl effect in there compared to a squish or an open face mold. So I'm going to use these sharp edge molds that Sophie and Toffee sent me a while back. I just hadn't had a chance to use them and I thought that, hey, let's give them a round two here and this would be a great use case for some smoky dice because they have this giant opening on the top in which you can swirl and smoke up your dice. You can either leave it open face for a smoky one, but then you have to carve in your own number or like this, you can put in your own little number on the top. Now, there are better versions of these molds and I do still have some problems with them, but they're good for starting so let's get moving on. Now, first thing I do to my molds is I tape them up with some painter's tape. I also am going to use some of these fireball molds from a previous video. I decided I wanted to do a little bit more and I thought that that would be fun. We're going to use some Art and Glow resin. It's just the typical cheapest resin that I like to use and we always make sure to wear our safety gloves and respirator as we're working with this stuff. It should be safe, however, I know you all have gloves at home right now, so you might as well be wearing them. I left my resin in a hot sink bath for about half an hour. I pretty much always do this before I make dice because it makes it flow a lot better, which honestly is normally fantastic for making dice, and it makes life so much easier and you're less likely to get bubbles and a lot of reasons. However, it's detrimental in this case, and I'll get to that in a minute. We're going to use a couple different colors. It's all going to be alcohol inks. We're going to use red, yellow, blue, black, and our normal glitter. We're going to add glitter to the transparency, so everything is going to have a little bit of glitter. So first off, with our large bit of resin here, I'm going to put four drops of glitter, just enough to make it so the transparent resin is shiny. And we're going to use some pipettes to get get all of that put in and over to the rest of the molds. When I make smoky dice, I like to have a transparent, just clear color so that you can obviously see the smoke. Other people like to put other colors, but honestly, I think you start to lose that smokiness because it'll just look like a blend of the two colors. And I've done that previously in a video that didn't really work out. It was actually when I first reviewed the Sophie and Toffee molds, but I think you should use transparency to get a good smoke effect. Now, I'm putting a lot in these molds because I only want a tiny bit of the smoke. If you want more of the color, you know, just use less of the transparent and put more of the color. It's probably pretty obvious, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Now, the other advantage of having these kind of open face or squish molds is you can pour your resin right in and you don't have to waste pipettes. A lot of people really prefer squish molds over the spruce style that I use or a combination of the two and you can get that as well. Now we're going to go ahead and mix up some of the colored resin by pouring it into just some disposable little Dixie cups and adding our own stir sticks on there. Now I'm using three drops of yellow, which is far too few and we'll get to that in a minute. It's just a transparent color and you want to put more of the transparent colors. Red, I actually wanted to be transparent, so I only put two drops of it. I wanted it to be a very clear red. Black, I put three. I probably should have put six in that one, but blue, I put two and that's almost too much. Blue is far darker than the others. I don't know why that is. It just happens to always turn out that way. Now, to get to the true secret of smoky dice, you have to wait for your resin to get almost syrupy, like honey. If you're not waiting for that, you're going to have bad lines and you're basically going to blend the color. So when I'm doing this, it has normally supposed to have been about half an hour. However, I talked about there being a problem with uh, leaving the resin in the heated sink bath for too long. The heat causes the chemical reaction to go faster, so I actually had far less time with this than I thought, so I was very much rushing in terms of getting these colors in and on there. It worked out fine for the ones that I had to use the pipettes on, but I'll show you a problem with the blue ones here in but a moment. You're basically going to squeeze your color in just like normal. I like to go to the bottom of the mold and pull up as I squeeze out to get a nice looking smoky effect, and that works for me. You can see it's almost getting stringy there, and here's where a problem is going to come in with the blue ones and the Sophie and Toffee molds. Now, this is already starting to solidify far too quickly. So I'm going to pour the blue resin on this little D6 here, and you can see it is thick. It is real thick, and I like it thick, make your jokes, but <laughs> this is far too thick. As I start pouring it in the other ones, it doesn't take long because luckily I don't have to use the pipettes. I don't even think it would have gone up in there, but as I'm trying to mix this, you can see, oh boy, that's 
that's not gonna level off properly. And the D6 was actually the only one where I could get some sort of swirl. The other ones all messed up on me and I was having a bad time. So much so, you can see when I zoom out here, I actually spilled one of the molds, there was resin everywhere. So the only one that's getting its lid on is the D6. And we'll throw it in the pressure pot along with the other molds, but good gosh. Those other ones stress me out that day, and so ideally work on one set of dice and don't actually put your resin into a hot water bath like I would normally suggest. You want to have more time to work with this rather than less, and the whole fluidity of it is not as important as being able to work with this while it's at that honey stage. Now I leave the dice in a 40 psi pressure pot for 24 hours to remove bubbles, but if you don't have a pressure pot, you can take a lighter to the top of them to remove a lot of the bubbles from the surface. It works well for those open face or those squish molds. Just a quick little tip. After 24 hours, we can remove our dice from the molds, and with these fireball dice, I wanted to make both a shadow bolt and one that was for a guiding bolt for a cleric. Now, both of them you can see, as I said, I didn't use enough color on these, so we'll fix that in the next one. But it does look okay. I think the yellow one almost looks like pee, and so I'm not a huge fan of that one. The shadowy one is actually pretty nice. I, I, I'm a fan of that one, but I probably would have put more if I had the choice. But that's okay. We're going to fix that coming up. Now we're going to take the other set out of the mold, and hot dang, am I a huge fan of how these turned out. It is so good looking. Those lines between the red and the transparent is crystal clear, and that only happened because we waited for it to be at that near molasses honey stage. Had we done it any earlier, the resin actually kind of moves around as it heats up and it would have blended and you would have got this weird kind of half pink dice and that's not what I wanted. I wanted this almost like will-o'-wisp look and with the blue one that I put in there, oh man I was upset that the whole blue set didn't work out because gosh dang it's pretty. Now the mold had a bubble in it and I kind of expect that of those molds. They're basically designed for UV dice rather than actually working with resin and putting them in a pressure pot so whatever I'm not going to take any more points off of their molds for using it for its unintended purpose. However that blue and that smoke Mm, I have to make a set out of that soon. It is truly a shame that the rest of them didn't work out because as I pull them out of the molds, uh, obviously I didn't put the lids on them, but they would have looked good. The bubbles are kind of bad and I really didn't get any swirls, but the one that I kind of got some on, like this D12, Man, it's, it's just nice looking, but we're gonna do a round two because I had some extra time, so I thought, hey, let's try some new colors. Now, not all of them work out for one reason or another, but we're gonna basically do the same thing. Mix up some resin and some silver additive. If you're gonna want less transparency, which I tried to do with these, you can actually tip your molds over if they're transparent to see how much is in the bottom. Now, when I fill these up, again, I'm using less than I did before, and we're gonna actually use some mica powder for one of these because I wanted to show you it doesn't just need alcohol ink with the resin, you can actually use Use mica powder and do the same thing. So I'm going to use some sparkle gold mica powder from Pearlex, some black alcohol ink, as well as mixing some blue alcohol ink with some of this micro pearl from Pearlex powder. And let me tell you, I have figured out the secret to getting galaxy dice completely by accident because that is phenomenal. And if I just mixed a little bit of purple in with that blue, you've got yourself some galaxy or if you even had some pink sparkles. And I also made my own pseudo purple by mixing two drops of blue and six drops of red alcohol ink. And it actually is a fantastically gorgeous purple as we mix it with things you'll see. We finally get to that honey kind of molasses stage. I did not let this resin warm up in a hot water bath and so I had more time to work with this. However, I didn't have time to work with four sets. I definitely should have stuck to one. So I mix the mica powder in with the fireball one as well as the blue with one of the fireball molds. Using the open Sophie and Toffee molds, I put the black as well as a mixture of the purple and I'm just going to set these out to see how they turn out and not put them in the pressure pot. Which is sad because you can see they the kind of greenish black and purple color from pushing the lid down would have been awesome and those dice don't turn out fantastic. And then I just make another purple set. I put them in my DIY pressure pot insert that I made a video on so that I could fit more things in there and set them in for around 40 psi for 24 hours. While that was happening, I was able to sand down the red set and oh my gosh, it is just so good. Mm, magnifique. I think it looks a lot like a Dexter blood slide from the TV show, and so I'm super into it. These almost should have been the blood dice for my Barbarian set, but we gotta ink them. And I didn't want something that could take away from this awesome lines between the red and the clear, so I ended up going with a silver that is a bit transparent with this Storm Host silver. You can actually see through it, and it's almost just performing like an outline for the numbers, enough to where you can see the numbers when you roll them without a problem, but you still see mostly just the dice. So with that, I was super duper happy. I thought the insides being able to see the silver was phenomenal and it didn't take away from the red and I was glad to be able to share that skill with you on how to do that today. Oh, did, 
Somebody say Skillshare because that's our sponsor for today. If you haven't heard of Skillshare, which I don't know how, but if you haven't, it's an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people alike. A lot of us are stuck indoors right now and what really better to do than to learn something new while you're at it. So I started looking up things like voice acting and podcasts because I thought they would be interesting to me and they'd kind of help keep my mind busy when I had some free time to just listen to something while I was doing stuff like sanding dice. I've always found creating content a form of self care or escapism for me, so this is kind of perfect to learn something new in this time where I need something like that. Skillshare has like a bajillion classes for different things to learn, so if you find yourself drawing or writing because you're bored right now, why not learn from the help of experts or projects that can help stave off that boredom and really get you moving to learn in a productive way rather than just learning by practicing only. I've been taking this class on how to make a podcast, not actually to learn how to make a podcast, but to learn the whole ins and outs of it and how to to better improve my audio. But I know times are tough right now and it's hard to justify spending money on something, so the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will actually get two free months of their premium service for free so that you can really find out if you like it or not, and I really think you will. Anyway, back to the glamour shots because that's what I know you Dice Goblins are here for anyway. I put down a piece of wood so that you could see through this a little bit better, and man, I really wish that blue set had come out good because those smoke effects are just awesome. By contrast, this one, here here, which I used the Perlex and the blue, turned out not super great. It looks okay, but because there's so few transparency, it almost just looks like that color all the way out. I like that color, but it's not what we were going for. By contrast, the guiding bolt that I tried to make out of the golden mica powder looks fantastic, and that's pretty much exactly how I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be transparent in the middle, and then kind of gold at the top and bottom. I'll definitely ink this a nice cleric -y color, and we'll call it good. These stand out by comparison to the black and yellow one from before by Miles. Now the purple set is awesome, but it has some flaws to it. That purple is just my favorite shade of purple. Besides gold, it's actually my favorite color and it's that exact shade, but you can see there's some issues with bubbles here. Because I took so freaking long and was trying to do four things at once rather than take my time and just do one, these didn't come out all that great. Some of them did, like this D20, I could totally turn into a working dice, and it's got these almost like purple tendrils. It looks fantastic, but a lot of them had bubbles, and it was just a bad time all around. So I wanted to show the colors, and that was the main point of it, so I probably won't finish these. It's a great color, and I could totally make it again, but it didn't work out. And the one with the black and purple also didn't work out. Because this technique generates a lot of bubbles, because you're doing it during that honey phase, and you're also swirling it around and generating more bubbles, it almost has to be done in a pressure pot. I would say, unless you're going to just have a completely opaque dice, which, why are you doing this kind of swirl effect in the first place, then you're gonna have bubble problems, and so you gotta use a pressure pot, and you might wanna find some squish molds that work. Finally, though, we come to the Magnum Opus, the Primo dice that actually worked out, got polished, stinked up, and I think it looks so freaking good. That looks like a will-o'-wisp or like a flame in this kind of clear glass. It looks like it was frozen in time, like it just took a chunk out of the air and said, this is going to be my dice. I don't know what it is, but this is actually one of my favorite sets in a while that I've made. So I think I'm actually going to add this to my dice tray and use this on a more daily basis. Now, if I wanted to make some other smoky ones like black, I'd totally could do that, but I really like this red. I don't think that you see this all that often. Blue would have been fantastic here, and I know my wife is mad that I didn't actually get the really good one done in blue because that blue was just phenomenal. However, the main thing was to learn this technique, and I'm definitely going to be using this in some upcoming class videos because I think a warlock would fit this Eldritch Blasty theme pretty nice with these shadows, or even a shadow monk or a shadowy rogue of sorts. I want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who help support this channel because without them, I definitely would not be able to do these type of videos, and I appreciate every single free freaking one of you. Subscribe if this is the first time you've seen one of my videos or if you want to learn how to make your own dice molds so that you can start making your own dice from scratch. I've got videos on that as well, as well as a ton of other really random dice ideas that people throw my way. So with that, if you have a dice idea you want to throw my way, definitely send it in the comments because I've done something like this just before for me, but you all asked that you wanted to see a smoky swirl dice like this, so I figured I'd go ahead and put it in a video and that came from you. Or if you want to see something that's not dice related at all, let me know that too because I do a ton of that type of stuff. So I hope that you are all staying safe and sound as well as your families and know that I care about that for you. So I hope that you're staying safe and I hope that you have a fantastic day.